Hey guys, so in my last video I went over some of the things I added to my tour program, basically just adding touch functionality, you know, adding buttons and making the map movable and stuff like that. Uh, in this video I'm going to go over some of the hardware things that I've added, pretty much just the GPS module here. Um, I got this GPS module from Amazon for the Arduino, it was like $13 or something like that, it was super cheap. And uh, I had to upgrade to a Arduino Mega uh, because I needed a couple more pins. So that's why it's no longer the Nano or the um, Uno. Uh, this is a, a bit overkill for what I'm doing. It's got a lot more pins than I need, but at least I won't have to buy another one. And it was only 30 bucks. And you know, if you wanted to buy like a cheaper one, they make uh, generic ones for like 15 bucks. So, but yeah, and I also made this little you know, board here where I mounted everything. Uh, this basically simulates everything that's in the truck. You know, so if I'm changing something or adding something or testing something, I don't have to go down to the truck in the garage and, and um, you know, do all that. I can basically make sure everything works you know, right here. And this is also good for other Arduino projects too. So, you know, all the modules are kind of bolted down, but I left the board uh, loose and, you know, nothing soldered. Everything is just using the little you know, the little uh, wires, you know, and, and the headers and stuff like that. So, uh, but yeah, basically this emulates everything in the truck. This is the relay board that fires the relays for the headlights and the monitors and the door locks and turns the door switches on and off. Um, this right here is the MP3 player, the, uh, the DF player that plays all the outside dinosaur noises. And there's the speaker for it there. So um, I can make sure that's working correctly. This board right here is basically the uh, the little Panasonic panel with the steady lights. And then these are the blinking like activity lights. So I can make sure that's working correctly. This is the iPack over here. Basically senses all the inputs from the truck, you know, the door switches. Um, I have volume buttons and stuff up here. Um, these basically uh, mimic that that's in the truck. These are the door switches here. So if I close, so if I flip these switches on, See, basically is uh, mimicking like the uh, the doors are open in the uh, Explorer. And there's one bad thing about this too is these little wires, these little push things are a little little finicky. I don't like using them, especially for like higher draw stuff like these relays and stuff. Um, I prefer to solder everything, but you know, this is basically just like a test uh, environment here. You know, I can make sure everything's working. Uh, but yeah, so the, the thing I added for the GPS module, um, it basically just sends serial data. Um, I forgot what the standard is. It's it's the, the marine like standard. Uh, it's a big block of serial data basically. And you can't really read it just by looking at it. But um, luckily there is a Arduino library that kind of parses all that data and makes it where you can read it. And it's called um, Tiny GPS Plus Plus Library. You download that for the Arduino. And it kind of makes all that data where you can use it and you can just put simple uh, little commands in there, you know, to, to get whatever reading you want. So basically I, I stripped out all the GPS location and all that stuff. I just want the speed basically. So this is going to be my speedometer. I'm also going to do some other things, which I'll show you here in a second with that. I made like an admin menu, um, kind of like a display status kind of menu. But I want to kind of almost replace my uh, gauge cluster. I know I put a lot of you know, quite a bit of work into making that, you know, removable gauge cluster work, but I think it'd be um, more slick if it was just kind of integrated in the tour program. So I might put like a little physical button where you can hit and it'll go to the screen, which, which I'm about to show you. But yeah, and this is the speaker for the, for the DF player. So this would be whatever's playing on the outside, you know, the dinosaur noises and some, some music and stuff plays on the outside. So, um, but yeah, so this is the menu that I added when you click uh, the, the island there brings up the admin menu. You can switch to different scenes right here. Um, and then I have a bunch of settings. So the cursor is the first one here. You can see the, the mouse cursor is on. So this is the touch screen, so I don't want that. So I can hit that. And now the mouse cursor is hidden. So you want this on if it was like, you know, you didn't have a touch screen and if, you know, basically you get the idea. I made it real big so you can easily click it if you accidentally clicked it or something like that. But um, so I'm gonna leave the mouse cursor off since it's a touch screen. Uh, but yeah, so you got the external volume here, which I'll, I'll demo that in a second. This will just turn this 
this uh, MP3 player up and down, basically uh, for the outside sounds. Um, but yeah, the big thing here is the vehicle. So when I click that, you'll see, uh, yeah, see it's having a hard time getting a signal inside here, but uh, this will change. Oh, there it goes. You can see the blue activity when it actually gets a signal. But uh, yeah, this will show the speed here. And they have some other options here, which uh, you guys know before the headlights on. It basically just turns that really on and off. The door is right there. And this will actually sync with with the, my keyboard commands too. So if I'm using the keyboard to turn the door, doors on and off, it'll you know it'll change this automatically too. So it can be like a status thing, or you can just click it. Um, the door switch turns off the door switches. Oh, let me just turn back on. Um, this will enable these door switches down here or not. Uh, there you go. You can see. So I have it there where uh, it'll show the uh, the status of the. Uh, of the door switches too. Oops, fall on over. Okay, there we go. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, the, the, you know, the GPS thing was the main thing I wanted to add. I'm also gonna eventually get these where they'll work, um, where it'll show up, you know, if my brake fluid is low or the e-brake e is on, you know, it will say check up there. You know, just like the movie, this basically, the screen I took almost directly from, uh, that to, the uh, computer system recreation video I did, the, the flash animation. So I took a lot of the assets from that and just uh, kind of reworked it where it'll work in the truck. But yeah, all these things will be easy, like the check engine light. Um, I try to make it kind of fit in with the universe instead of saying check engines, motor, fuel, eh, yeah. So, um, but yeah, the actual voltage, the temperature and the fuel are gonna be a little bit tricky. I'm probably gonna use the Arduino to read those sensors and, um, and spit it out uh, like a serial form. And I can, like I said, I'm not, I'm not a uh, real big software guy. So, uh, you know, a lot of this just kind of takes a little bit of time and troubleshooting, but um, yeah, these should be pretty easy, but the actual like sensors, like the, like I said, the volts and the temperature will be a little bit more difficult. The other ones I can probably just do with the IPAC, um, all these, signals from the truck are grounds. So like when the check engine light comes on, it's a ground, uh, which is what the IPAC senses. So I can just use that and uh, and just feed it back into the tour program. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And you know, if you guys are interested in Arduino stuff, it's super cheap to get into. Like I said, this, this mega I bought was like 30 bucks. You can get a generic one that does the same thing for like 15 bucks. And all these little switches and boards and stuff are uh, are all super cheap. So, and uh, it, it is a lot of fun to get into. Um, yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll use this little rig here for some other projects and stuff too. So, um, it's just kind of nice having everything mounted there. Well, I figured I'd give you guys a little update on the Arduino stuff. And uh, yeah, I hope to have it integrated in the truck soon. I'm just kind of still doing the testing phase. But uh, yeah, if I get some free time here uh, coming up, uh, yeah, I'll do another video when it's actually in the truck. Oh my God. All right, well, thanks for watching. Oh, one more thing. I mentioned I was going to show a little demo of the, the MP3 player working. I know in some of the other videos you couldn't really see uh, kind of what was going on. But um, yeah, so let me go ahead and jump to, uh, say like the Dilophosaurus. To the right, you will see a herd of the first dinosaurs on our tour called Dilophosaurus. One of the earliest carnivores... We now know Dilophosaurus is actually poisonous, spitting its venom at its prey, causing blindness and eventually paralysis. And if I wanted to uh, make it louder, at its leisure, this makes Dilophosaurus a beautiful but deadly addition to Jurassic Park. There's also settings here too. So, like, um, if I don't want the sounds to play in the timeline, I can hit that and. From now on, as it moves through the, uh, it'll continue whichever one it's doing. But from now on, it won't, uh, it won't play those sounds in the timeline. So if you were like a event, uh, event or something where you wanted it quiet, um, you could turn that on and off. And this is going to be a, uh, a little feature I'm going to add where, as the truck gets moving with the GPS, it'll uh, make like the like electric kind of humming sound on the outside, and then when it stops, it'll make that like, that like 
I can't really mimic it, but in the movie, when the trucks stop, they make this noise. So I'm gonna make that as like an option there too, so. Um, all right, and I'll cut to the, uh, the video of the GPS.